This is a Canadian uh, 1944 WS-52 auxiliary receiver. Uh, pretty good example of a receiver built uh, back at the end of World War II. It's a surprisingly good performer. Let's sit it on the bench here for a minute and uh, what we'll do is uh, remove the front cover. Have to disconnect the antenna first. And we'll go ahead and reconnect the antenna back up for now. There are two chassis, uh, one for the uh, RF and IF in the back and a smaller audio chassis in the front. All the tubes are inside these metal shields. And if you take the shield off, it kind of looks like a 6D6 or a 6C6, but uh, when you actually pull the tube out, you find they have a completely different base. It's kind of uh, unique to these radios. The rest of the construction is pretty much standard. Uh, I've replaced a number of the bypass and uh, decoupling capacitors. The power plug's kind of like a Jones plug, and uh, fortunately, when I purchased this radio, it uh, came with a power plug and uh, cable, so uh, that's been really helpful. Using the radio is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got a pretty nice reduction tuning on it. The two knob affair, and then there's also a fine tuning adjustment on top of that. We're in the uh, 80 meter CW sub band right now. There's three bands green, yellow, and orange. We're in yellow right now. I also have an IF filter, which uh, it's not a crystal filter, it's just a different set of uh, IF transformers that they use for uh, narrowband operation. On the other side of the radio, you have the big selector knob where you could read all the individual voltages or check individual tubes. The uh, AM CW selector is over there also. So switch it over to AM with ABC. Uh, both CW and AM will allow you to run either uh, AVC with the radio or without. Kind of a unique feature. Uh, if anything, the radio is too sensitive, then you really do have to decrease the RF gain on it a lot. There's also an internal calibrator. We'll put it on 100 KC. And uh, zero beat the radio. Not really quite sure how you would actually go ahead and correct it to match the calibrator, but you do have that option. So overall, it's a surprisingly uh, good performing receiver for as old and big as it is. And at first I really thought it was kind of ugly, but I have to admit it kind of grows on you after a while. So that's the World War II Canadian WS-52 receiver. <laughs>